This video is a re-upload. The original version of this video had Wi-Fi interference in the flight test. This re-upload replaces the flight footage with the version that doesn't have Wi-Fi interference. Apologies for the double notification. You can find the flight footage in the table of contents in the timeline if you've already watched this video and you just want to check the updated flight footage. The 533 Switchback is arguably the best racing quadcopter you can build today. More pro racers run the 533 Switchback even though it's made by Evan Turner, who they are ostensibly trying to beat in a race, and yet they're still flying his frame and in some cases his motors. So it's that good. But there are people who say that this quadcopter is a relic of the past. And the reason why is this camera and this video transmitter. That's right, this is an analog quadcopter. An analog, and no, I'm not talking about switching to DJI, which is clearly completely unacceptable for racing. I'm talking about this. This 533 switchback has in it the new Sharkbite 5.1 racing video transmitter and the new upgraded Sharkbite camera from HD0 and Runcam. And HD0 says that this is the future of racing. Is it? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This quadcopter was loaned to me for this video by Ryan Quellet and HD0. I will not be keeping it after the review. I have not received any cash or other compensation in exchange for this video, and nobody has had any editorial control or approval over the contents of this video before it's released. The thing I am most excited about today is the chance to get to try out this new camera. I have always said that Sharkbite has really been held back by the quality of the camera that it originally shipped with. It was a micro-sized camera, so it was 14 millimeter wide, it had a very small sensor, and it had an M8 lens, and I think it was even a plastic lens. And I've said that I wish somebody would use a big sensor with a nice big M12 glass lens and really make the most of the video link that Sharkbite is capable of doing. And people are saying that this Runcam camera is the closest Sharkbite has ever come to delivering on that promise. We're going to fly that and we're going to find out a little later in the video. Uh, but before we do that, I want to take a look at this new video transmitter and see what Sharkbite has done with their racing video transmitter. And you can immediately see that the racing video transmitter, and that's this top board right here, uh, it is a little bit longer than the 20 millimeter single board video transmitter that Sharkbite used to have. I don't have one of those in front of me, but it basically would have fit in this stack and it would have fit in the standard uh, 533 switchback frame. This is an updated longer version of the 533 switchback that's specifically designed to fit the Sharkbite uh, video transmitter for racing. And that speaks to just how committed 533 is to digital racing with the shark bite. In fact, Evan Turner flew this exact quad, literally this exact quad, at MultiGP International Open and was really impressed with it. So that certainly says something. Now, at first glance, the new TX 5.1 video transmitter is not that different from the old 20 millimeter video transmitter. In fact, they both have the same maximum output power of 200 milliwatts, although you'll probably use 25 milliwatts for racing. One of the reasons that the new video transmitter is so much bigger is that Sharkbite wanted to, or Fatshark, wanted to increase the durability of the board, especially for racing where you're going to be taking big hits. Not that you don't take big hits during freestyle, but durability is critical for racing. By going to a larger board, they were able to use larger and more robust components, and that is intended to give a little bit more durability. We'll have to see how they hold up in the real world to see whether that actually pans out. Another thing they did to increase the durability is these are M4 holes with M3 screws going into them and a uh, silicon bushing, and so that's going to provide some vibration insulation as well. Turn the video transmitter over, we can see another improvement that they've made, and that is a uh, brass piece on the UFL connector to help hold the UFL connector on. This is something that I first saw on TBS Unify video transmitters, but it's such a simple and smart idea. Just have some screws and a little brass piece 
to help keep that UFL from getting ripped off while you're flying. Another feature that's been added to the 5.1 racing video transmitter is the ability to use smart audio. Now you probably know of smart audio as a way of letting your uh, flight controller interface with your analog video transmitter to change your transmit power and channel and so forth. And SharkBite has always had the ability to change your transmit power and channel using the SharkBite OSD in the goggles. So why would you want smart audio? Betaflight has a VTX function that lets you assign output power and channel to switches or potentiometers. So for example, I could set my flight controller up so that as I press these buttons, I change between channels, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I just press the button and change the channel. Or I could set my flight controller up so that as I turn this knob, it turns the output power of the video transmitter up and down. Or I could have a switch to enable different power levels or different channels. It's really completely up to you. I've got a video about how to set up that function. It's intended for an analog video transmitter, but the process is exactly the same when setting up a SharkBite video transmitter using Smart Audio. I'll put a link to that down in the video description. So that's a quick overview of the changes that Fat Shark has made with the 5.1 Racing VTX. That VTX is available for about 50 bucks. I actually just bought one for this review before Ryan sent me one. Uh, and uh, interestingly, at this exact time that I'm recording this, the SharkBite video receiver module, which is normally $250, is only, if they've marked it down to 100 bucks as just like a flash sale because they want to get it out there. No, they're, they say they're not discontinuing it. So if you're interested in picking this up at the end of this video, there are links in the video description. They are affiliate links. It's an easy way for you to support the channel. I just get a small commission when you make any purchase after you use them. And there's never been a better time to get a SharkBite video receiver. 100 bucks is really ridiculous. They've got to be losing money, but hey. All that being said, let's take it outside and fly it and see what the video looks like. The original version of this video had flight footage from SharkBite that was getting interference from my Wi-Fi network, and as a result, it had some sparkles in it that did not reflect the normal usage. This is new flight footage recorded with the Wi-Fi APs turned off, uh, so if the flight footage doesn't quite seem to perfectly match up with my voice, that's why. Let's just take a second and recap the advantages of the SharkBite system uh, in case this is the first time you're really paying attention to it. Uh, and one of the advantages is the latency. Now the latency of the SharkBite system is lower under most circumstances than that of the, of the DJI system. Some people have measured latency as low as four milliseconds but to, from about four to about 20 milliseconds, some as high as 30 milliseconds depending on the way that they're measuring latency and no, Latency measurement is not just a be-all, end-all thing. There are different ways of measuring it. Compared to the DJI system, the latency is at its lowest, about 20, 25 milliseconds, and under real-world conditions, often 25 to 35 or even 40 or 45 milliseconds, depending on what camera you're using and how far away you are from yourself. And that's the big thing with the SharkBite system, that the latency is not just lower, under most real world conditions, but it is consistent. The DJI system, as you get further away, the latency changes, sometimes unexpectedly. It can jump from 35 to 40 or 25 to 30 milliseconds. And if you are not expecting that, it can throw off your reaction time and make you crash. This camera is the best looking shark bite camera I've seen to date. Like, it's the first SharkBite camera that I really felt like it was better than like a typical analog camera. How does it compare to DJI? Well, this isn't about DJI, right? That's what we said at the beginning of the video. Colors are very nice and saturated. I might actually like a little bit less saturation because like if you look in the darkest shadows, like look right there center in that area under the barn, you see it's really black. And as I get closer, it opens up, but let's back up a little. It's even this close, it's just complete blackness. So as I were to dive in here, it opens up. But if I didn't already know this, if I didn't already know this line, I might not be confident diving into a shadowed area like that. 
But it's not as bad as some cameras I've seen. Like right now, you absolutely can see under the shadows of those trees. And it does a pretty good job with the exposure. Like as we look up into the sky here, we see we're not getting white out from the sun. And as we look down, it very quickly adjusts to show those shadows, right? Sky, ground. At no point, I'm not even really seeing it adjust the, the gain at all. Feeling really nice and confident coming through here. By the same token, as we come through a shadowed area, the bright area on the other side is not excessively blown out. See, look, we're doing real good. We can see out into the sunny areas, no problem. Even the sky is, it's doing a really good job with the exposure algorithm. It feels like it has pretty decent dynamic range, honestly. I've seen analog cameras with worse. As far as details go, uh, pure resolution is always an area where SharkBite has suffered a little bit. It is a 720p signal being carried over the air but some have suggested that the actual resolution of the sensor is less than 720p. But we certainly can pick out some needles here. I feel like this is better than you would get with a typical analog camera. Like the, the resolution is just clearly better than analog in terms of the ability to pick out those branches. Boy, the latency feels nice. I gotta tell you, you get used to DJI with the changing latency. You kind of learn to deal with it, but it is certainly nice flying with a control link that has consistent latency to try to give the confidence to dive into areas where you can't necessarily see what's going on. Oh, that wasn't a great dive. Should I try to do some racy stuff? I mean, I'm not the fastest racing pilot to begin with, so I'm not really a guy who's gonna like, oh, like an Evan Turner tries out your system and is like, oh, this is good. You know it's good. You know, as I've been working with this SharkBite system, I've seen a lot of improvements that Fat Shark has made in the menu of the system, and I'm really impressed. Uh, one of the things I see is the RSSI indicators in the top right, uh, which they were added some time ago, but I also see a red recording dot, which didn't used to be there. And it always bugged me that you couldn't be 100% sure if your SD card was inserted and you were recording. It's awesome that they have addressed this. Here we can see the ability to change the channel and the output power as you'd expect. LP mode puts the transmitter into low power when the quad is disarmed so it doesn't overheat while it's sitting oh, like that. <laughs> Good timing, I swear that was an accident. So it doesn't overheat while it's sitting on the bench. Uh, we've been plugged in for a little while, uh, so it's not too bad, but you definitely want that on. Then as soon as the quad arms, it'll go up to full power. And pit mode is pretty interesting. Uh, it can be configured to power up at one milliwatt or at zero milliwatts, which is literally off, and then only turn on when you arm or you can control it with an aux switch uh, using Betaflight smart audio function. This is super useful for team racing uh, where you may want multiple quads plugged in at a time but only one quad actually being active. Um, finally, uh, again, reflecting SharkBite's focus on racing, the offset 25 milliwatt option lets you fine tune the output power of the 25 milliwatt mode so it is not too powerful and you'll get disqualified but also as powerful as possible. And it's a really, really nice function. So that brings us back to the question that we started the video with. Is this the future of racing? And I've been wrong enough times that I will hesitate to say, yes, definitively, this is the future of racing. But if the future of FPV is digital, as I think it is, then this certainly could be the direction that we see the future of FPV racing going. Because if you're mostly concerned about freestyle or long range cruising, there's no question that analog or DJI have some big advantages. But when you look at racing specifically, where the thing you care most about is latency and you don't care about range or penetration much at all, 
That really seems like the sweet spot for something like Shark Bite. And before you argue, uh, analog's fine for racing. Yeah, it is. But I've been there, as little of a racer as I am. I've been there where you come through a gate and the next gate that you need to hit is far enough away and it's like lost in the brightness of the sky. And instead of going Bwah, full throttle through that gate, I slow down because I don't feel confident seeing where I'm going. Obviously, guys like Evan Turner and Alex Vanover don't seem to have that problem. Or maybe they do. And they're just at so much a higher level that when I'm putting in 20 second laps and I'm struggling to get an 18 second lap, they're putting in 10 second laps. But if they could see better, would they be putting in nine second or whatever laps? Well, it's a good question. Here's the other reason why I think it's possible that Sharkbite is going to be the future of racing, as they claim. Because HD Zero is the company that makes the chips that go onto these chipsets, onto these boards. And Fat Shark is the manufacturer that actually sells them. But HD Zero has said that they're willing to sell these chips to any company that wants to make a compatible video transmitter and video receiver. We see HD Zero working with Runcam outside of Fat Shark completely independently. We see HD0 making improvements to the firmware, uh, independent of Fat Shark. And that means that one of the main advantages of analog, which is that you can get compatible hardware from lots of different vendors, uh, SharkBite has the potential to fill that niche in a way that no other digital system in existence today, well, that's basically just DJI, right? canvas mode. We got canvas mode. The OSD actually freaking works. We got a uh, true zero milliwatt pit mode for, for team relay racing. And who knows what else we're going to get in the future. I want a one watt VTX. <laughs> and then we'll see how the range really stacks up. For now, for general cruising or freestyle, as I said, analog, I think is the way to go. But for racing, I think we're starting to get to a point where this could actually be viable. And timing, the channels, the timing system, completely compatible, by the way. Didn't mention that. I guess the only question is the durability. Well, we won't know until people start smashing it into the ground and we actually have retail samples, but it's looking pretty good. If you are interested in getting into this, there has never been a better time because this, this used to be $250 and it is now, at, at, right now it's $100. By the time you're watching it, it may not be. It's a flash sale. HD Zero is just trying to get it out there. It's okay. Hundred dollars for this receiver. You bring your own goggles. There's also the Fat Shark Scout HD goggles, which are built-in goggles with 1080p screens and a built-in receiver. Two hundred fifty dollars. It's the same price as this receiver normally is, but with a goggle included. Links to all that stuff down in the video description below as well. This, this, <laughs> is. A, an amazing flying racing drone. If you're interested in getting into racing, I've got a build video for this where I walk you through how to build it. There's a link to that down below. Uh, same process, oh, I guess is this one, this doesn't, this frame isn't out yet. Maybe I'll do a build of that one when it finally comes out. And if so, I'll put a link down there as well. But in the meantime, that's gonna do it for this video. What do you think? I always wanna know what you think down in the comments. Are you ready to switch? If you're a racer, are you ready to go to Shark Bite? And give up on analog? Or are you still holding on to analog? Let me hear what you think and why. That's going to do it for this video. Happy flying. You guys, I don't know where I am. And I, I don't know what's going to happen. But if I don't make it out of this, I just want to know that you subscribe to my channel. Or, or maybe join my Patreon. Or, or click one of the... Click one of these videos I picked out for you. <gasps>